Hello, this is Brett Martin from the podcast, The Chesterfield Baptist Church. We are on the road taking my wife and my kids to see their grandmother. And uh, wife, say hi. Hi. Kids, say hi. Hi. But uh, even though we're on the road, the podcast still has to happen. So uh, this is this morning's message in the church. And the title of the message is Obtaining Wisdom. This is actually a new Sunday morning series that we're starting, an eight-week series on wisdom, and please enjoy. Go ahead, turn your Bibles to James chapter 1 while they're heading out, James chapter number 1. What we're actually going to be doing is they're going to be starting a new Sunday morning series this morning, and the subject is of the series is going to be godly wisdom. Godly wisdom is going to be uh, the subject of the series that will uh, go on for the next eight weeks, an eight-week series on wisdom. James chapter 1, give you just another second to get there. If you have your places in James chapter 1, I'm going to ask you to stand in respect and reverence the Word of God. We're going to be in reading in verse number 5 or read down to verse number 12. The Bible says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that He shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted, but the rich in that he is made low, because as the flower of the grass he shall pass away. For the sun no sooner risen with a burning heat, but it withereth the grass, and the flower thereof falleth, and the grace of the fashion of it perisheth so also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. The title of the message this morning is Obtaining Wisdom. Obtaining Wisdom. Let's pray. Dear Gracious Heavenly Father, once again we come to you and thank you for allowing us to come into your house. Lord, I pray that you'd be with the Word of God. Holy Spirit, fill our, fill this place. And Lord, fill us, Holy Spirit. and Do something with us. and Help us to understand your words. Help us to understand this thing of godly wisdom. Be with our service this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. Over in 2 Chronicles 1, we see a story of a man. We see a story of a man whom God came to. And God came to this man and said, Look, I'm going to give you anything you ask of me. Anything you ask of me, I'm going to give it to you. And let me tell you something. When the creator of the universe comes to you and gives you a blank check, That is going to be a life-changing event. That is a life-changing event. Oh, Solomon, he did not have anything to worry about. See, Solomon had really had it made. See, David had fought so fiercely and David had fought so victoriously that all the kingdoms around Israel were scared to come up against Israel because of David. So Solomon didn't have anything to worry about in that respect. But God came to Solomon and said, Solomon, I'll give you anything you want. Solomon could have asked for anything. He could have asked for riches. He could have asked for wealth. He could have asked for the life of his enemies. He could have asked for honor. He could have asked for long life for himself. But he didn't ask for any of that. The Bible tells us that Solomon asked for wisdom and knowledge. God was so impressed with 
Solomon's request that he not only gave him wisdom and he not only gave him knowledge, he gave him all that other stuff too. That's how impressed God was with Solomon's desire for wisdom. I ask a question to you this morning. How bad do you want wisdom? Now, what is wisdom? Is wisdom simply knowledge? Knowledge is a part of wisdom, but wisdom is more than knowledge. Wisdom is the capacity to use knowledge. The application of knowledge is wisdom. You can study all, you can memorize books and texts and law, and you can memorize the law of the land, and you can pass the bar exam, but if you don't know how to apply that knowledge in a courtroom, you're not going to be a very good lawyer. Wisdom is more than just memorizing facts. Wisdom is knowing how to use those facts. What we're going to do over the next eight weeks is we're going to look at biblical godly wisdom, and that's what this series is going to be on. Now, I'll tell you this. If I were to preach on every verse in the Bible about wisdom, this wouldn't be an eight-week series. It'd be an eight-month series. So we're not going to cover absolutely everything, but we are going to hit a lot of areas on wisdom. So I want to jump right into the message this morning. I promise you I won't be long this morning. I've timed this message. It's not a long message. But you know, God can do anything. Uh, number one, this morning, we're going to talk about obtaining wisdom. It's going to be about obtaining wisdom. So here's my first point this morning. The request for God's wisdom. The request for God's wisdom. Let's look at verse five again. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. You know, if you consider this verse and what this verse is trying to say to us, we're, uh, we're kind of in the same boat as Solomon. We too can go to God and ask anything of him. We too can, just like Solomon, go to God and ask him for wisdom. We can do that just like Solomon did. But the Bible says, ye have not because ye ask not. Now I want you to notice what James says. He says, if any of you lack wisdom, you are not going to ask God for wisdom until you realize that you need it. You're not going to ask God for wisdom until then. No, we all know compared to God, our wisdom it's extremely lacking. I don't care how long you've been saved or how long you've been in church or how long you've studied the word of God. Compared to God, our wisdom is very lacking. But you'd be surprised, um, you'd be surprised how many, uh, how about very few Christians regularly admit that uh, they don't have enough wisdom to run their everyday lives. There are few Christians who will admit that that I don't have enough wisdom to run my everyday life. Let me tell you something. We don't need godly wisdom just for spiritual things, and spiritual things is the only thing I need God's wisdom for. I need God's wisdom for my family. I need God's wisdom for my work. I need God's wisdom for my finances. I need God's wisdom for everyday stuff. I don't only need God's wisdom to understand my Bible. I need God's wisdom to understand my budget. I need God's wisdom in every area of my life, not in just the spiritual ones. When he says, if any of you lack wisdom, uh, James being very polite there. Uh, when he knows we all need the wisdom, we all kind of dumb in that area. But if any of you lack wisdom, all of you lack wisdom. And it's probably what he was thinking. But, you know. Who, who in here would stand up and raise their head and say, I have all the wisdom I need and I don't need any more? Hopefully no one. Hopefully no one would be so arrogant as to say that. And you know, sometimes we think we have all the wisdom we need. And when we think that, guess what? That's usually when we need it the most. Is when we think we know it all. All of us 
All of us lack wisdom. Now, here's a question. If we lack wisdom, why do we lack wisdom? Let me give you some reasons why we lack wisdom. Reason number one, we lack wisdom because our flesh is weak. Our flesh is weak and our old sin nature pulls us down. Yes, when you get saved, you are a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. But even though you're a new creature, you've still, you're still wearing that old flesh. You're still wearing that old man and that old sin nature constantly pulls us down. And that sin nature makes us dumb and our flesh makes us dumb. I'm going to say something some of you might not agree with. But I I believe this. I do not think it is wise to let a red-blooded American teenage boy and a red-blooded American teenage girl be unchaperoned in a non-public place. I do not think that is wise. I will tell you why. My old pastor, he had a saying. When emotions get aroused, intellect stops working. A pretty girl batting her eyes at you will make you dumb. A handsome young man with rippling muscles like these will make you dumb. That will make you dumb. Your flesh makes you dumb. You can't trust your flesh. You never can. Number two, the second reason why we lack wisdom is because the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar and the devil is constantly trying to deceive us and trick us. Let me tell you something. Do not ever think you are going to outsmart the devil. Do not think that you have ever came to the point in your Christian life where you've arrived and the devil does not pose a threat to you. The devil is smarter than you and I will ever be put together. People get in trouble in their Christian life and they ruin their lives because they think, oh, I can be trusted. I can trust myself. I've been in these situations before. I've made it through it. I can make it again. And the devil sneaks up on a person like that and knocks them down. Do not underestimate the the devil. Here's the third reason why we lack wisdom. We lack wisdom because as we move through life, We're going to come across things we've never come across before. We're going to experience challenges that we've that we've never experienced before. We can be bopping along, minding our own business, thinking, man, I've seen it all. Then something comes along and knocks us out of left field, knocks us down, and suddenly we're not as smart as we thought we were. Many years ago, there was a magazine article written. And the title of the article was 178 Seconds to Live. And what the magazine article was about was about this brand new flight simulator that had just been built. Man, you get in this flight simulator and it, it, it was like being in the, a real cockpit of a plane. It had all the same instruments and you, the screen. It was like you were looking at a screen like you were really on a plane And when you ascended into the air, the simulator would raise up in the air. When you descended, it would go down in the air. It's a flight simulator. And at the time, it was new technology. So what this journalist did is he he followed 20 uh, very capable uh, pilot students. These are students that were very, very capable, top of their class. And he followed these students and watched them as they were in the simulator. And all 20 of these very capable flight students, they got in their plane, they went up in the air, they flew to their destination, they landed very carefully and very successfully. Well, then they put the same 20 capable, skilled pilots back in the simulator. But these pilots, even though they were skilled, they had not had instrument training in bad weather yet. So as soon as they started the bad weather program in the flight simulator, all 20 of these pilots started to drop like flies. They all started to 
fall out of the sky and crash. The average time from the time the storm started to the time they hit the ground was 178 seconds. These very capable, uh, uh, skilled uh, pilots, they could, they could stay up in the air all day long with good weather, but the second you throw a storm in their way, they couldn't last three minutes. Let me tell you something. It may seem like we can handle things in our lives and and things are going good and things are going our way. It may seem like we can handle it. But let me tell you something. A storm in your life can make you dumb very quickly. A storm can, take, can make you think you're doing okay. A storm can come along and you realize just how dumb you really are. You find out real fast you need God's wisdom. The good news is whenever we lack wisdom, we can go to him. We can ask him in faith, and he will supply that wisdom for us. Number two this morning, the riches of God's wisdom. Let's read verse five again. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. What I want you to notice this morning is I want you to notice how God gives wisdom. How does God give wisdom? Well, number one, he gives it generously. He gives it generously. Verse five tells us that he, give, he gives wisdom to all people. You see, he, is, he, he, is, he has more than enough to go around. He's not going to leave you out. I don't care how long, if you've been saved 50 years or if you've been saved five minutes, he's got wisdom for you. I don't care what your background is. I don't care if you were raised by Christian parents or if, you're, or if you've been, come from a, a broken home, from an abusive home. It doesn't matter what your background is. He has just enough wisdom for one as he does the other. He gives his wisdom to all people. It doesn't matter what your background is. It doesn't matter what you've done or where you've come from. He's very generous with his wisdom. Number two, he gives it abundantly. He gives his wisdom abundantly. The, the, the Bible says in verse five, it says he gives it liberally. You know what that means? It means God's giving is deep. It means that he's never going to run out. I know y'all may get tired of hearing me say this. Man, y'all better get used to it. When I was a kid, I loved Walker, Texas Ranger. I loved old Walker, Cordell Walker. It's part of the reason why I like Chuck Norris today. I loved old Walker. Old Walker, man, a roundhouse kick to the face and... You know, he could, he always beat the bad guy and he always win and, and he always won the fight and they were all always laughing at the end of the episode and my sister always made fun of it because when, when, the, when the episode would freeze, when the credits come up, they were always laughing. They are always laughing at the end and they all had a good time. But man, man, Cordell Walker, he, he was skilled, not only in Taekwondo, but you know, he was also skilled with that gun. He was skilled with that weapon. Walker was so skilled, he could shoot the gun out of your hand and not, the bullet wouldn't even touch you. It would just touch the gun. The gun would go flying and you'd be okay. Okay? Not only that, but uh, here's the skill I want to learn. Walker was so skilled at shooting that gun that he could shoot and shoot and shoot that gun and never have to reload. That's the skill I want to learn. <laughs> Teach me how to do that. Okay? Shoot that gun and never have to reload. That saved me a lot of money. You know, he needs to have a class on how to do that. But he could shoot and shoot and never run out of bullets. You know, that reminds you, that's kind of like Jesus. Jesus never runs out of what we need. If we need forgiveness, I've got forgiveness. My Bible says in Ephesians 1, 7 and 8, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace, wherein He hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. If I need forgiveness, bless God, I've got forgiveness. If I need peace, I've got peace. Philippians 4, 7, and the peace of God which passeth all understanding. If I need peace, I've got peace. 
If I need strength, I've got strength. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. If I need comfort, bless God, he is the God of comfort. 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 4. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforted us in our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Bless God, we can have comfort because he is the God of comfort. And we can have wisdom because Jesus is our endless supply of wisdom. Proverbs 2, 6 and 7. For the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk up rightly. You know how he gives his wisdom? He gives his wisdom generously. He gives his wisdom abundantly. And number three, he gives his wisdom kindly. He gives his wisdom kindly. Verse 5 says, and upbraideth not. You know what that means, upbraideth not? It means God's giving is sweet. It means that he gives without disapproval. He gives without criticism. He gives without condemnation. And he gives without shame. Have you ever been in a tough spot and you needed a loan or you needed some help? And you knew someone who could give you, your, give you the help you need, but you really didn't want to go ask them because you know that when you ask them for help, they're going to make you feel bad about it. Oh, they may give you the help that you need, but not before they lecture you and criticize you and put you down and make you feel bad for needing help. We've all been around people like that before. But you see, that's something you don't have to worry about when you come to Christ for help. Because my Bible says in Romans 8, 20, Romans 8 verse 1, There is therefore now no condemnation in them which are in Christ Jesus. See, I can come to Christ and he upbraideth not. He is kind. He is not going to shame me. He's not going to criticize me. He's not going to condemn me. He upbraideth not. So when we, when we lack wisdom, all we need to do is ask God for it. He will give it to us generously. He will give, us to, he will give it to us abundantly. And he will give it to us kindly. Now, number three, we have the roadblocks to wisdom. The roadblocks to wisdom. Over the next few verses in this chapter, God shows us some roadblocks to wisdom. And the first roadblock to wisdom is a lack of faith. Lack of faith is the first roadblock to wisdom. Let's read verses 6 through 8. Well, let him ask in faith nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea uh, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You know, faith... Faith includes trusting in God's character. Faith includes trusting in the word of God. Faith is, uh, when it comes to faith, we're looking for something that we just can't quite see yet, but we still know it's there. That's faith. And you see, when we don't have faith, we're tossed about. That's, you ever see someone who doesn't have any direction? They're over here one day, and then the next day they're over here, and the next day they're over here, and the next day they're over here at this church, and the next day they're over there, and the next day they're doing this, and they just like they have no direction in their life. It's because they have a lack of faith. That is a roadblock to wisdom. You can't get wisdom if you have a lack of faith. Verse 7, it says, for let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. Without faith, do not think you're going to get anything from God. 
If you don't have faith, if you don't have faith enough to pick a direction and stay in that direction or, or do God's will and you keep jumping around because you have a lack of faith, don't expect anything from God. Oh, I haven't been to church in six months, but I'm going to go today. Well, I didn't get anything out of that. Well, I wonder why. Don't expect anything from God if you're jumping around, if you have a lack of faith. The Bible also says without faith, we are double-minded. Now, double-minded means it means two-faced and miserable. It's another word for hypocrite. Man, I get that a lot. Hey, my name is Brother Brett. I'm from uh, Chesbro Baptist Church, or I'm from Open World Baptist Church, and uh, I'm just out visiting in your area. I was wondering if you had a church you go to. Oh, no, I don't go to church. There's, there's, a lot of, there's too many hypocrites in church. If you don't want to go where any hypocrites are, then don't go to Walmart. Walmart's full of hypocrites, okay? But you know, uh, the, you know why, though? I'm not saying hypocrites don't exist. They do. But you, you know the reason why people are hypocrites? They're hypocrites because of a lack of faith. Because at church they act one way, and at home they act another. At church they act one way, and at work they act another. At church they act one way, and they act another. It's a lack of faith. Can't get wisdom with a lack of faith. What's the second roadblock? The second roadblock is an unfair world. An unfair world. We get a glimpse of an unfair world in verse 9. It says, Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. You know what that's basically saying? That's basically saying a Christian who does not amount to much in this world needs to still be glad for he is great in the Lord's sight. That's what that verse means. And the reason why James is telling us this is because James knows life isn't fair. Let me tell you something. We, we know we are far, far blessed above most people in this world. We know that. But at the same time, not everybody's going to be smart. Not everybody's going to be well-educated. Not everybody's going to be wealthy. Not everybody is going to live in a big, fancy home. In fact, many people come from very bad home situations. Many people come from broken homes. Many people come from abusive homes. There are people out there with health issues that me and you can't imagine. Life is unfair. But you know what? That can be a roadblock to wisdom. But I want to tell you something. And no matter what season or what you're going through in your life, God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. We have to remember that it's possible to be a rich, poor man. Oh, poor in money, but rich in love and rich in grace and rich in joy, and rich in peace, and rich in righteousness, and rich in fellowship. You may not have all the money, but I've got a lot more important stuff than money. Amen. The third roadblock of wisdom is pride. It's pride. Let's look at verse 10 and 11. But the rich in that he is made low, because as the flower of the grass he shall pass away. For the sun is no sooner risen with the burning heat, but it withereth the grass, and the flower thereof falleth, and the grace of the fashion of it perisheth. So also shall the rich man fade away in his, in his ways. This is a story of a rich man who's being made low. This is a story of a prideful man that God is trying to humble. But you know what the problem with this prideful man? Even though God is trying to humble him, he will not let go of his pride. When somebody's humbled by God, then they turn around and humble themselves, they can be brought back. They can be healed. They can be brought back to where they were. 
But when somebody is being humbled by God and they refuse to let go of their pride, they're going down with the ship. They're going down with the ship. You know, he, he's not asking this guy that won't let go of his pride. He's not asking for wisdom from God. He would rather die than ask wisdom from God. That's what pride will do. It will block you from getting wisdom. Now, I want you to see here. This is interesting. He was just talking about a poor man, and now he's talking about a rich man. You know why? Because at the foot of the cross, everybody's on the same level. Everybody's level at the foot of the cross. And finally, this morning, we have the road to God's wisdom. Let's read verse number 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to them that love him. Who's that him? It's Christ. The road to wisdom is Jesus Christ. The road to wisdom is knowing and loving the Lord. You know, a big part of being a Christian is enduring temptation. A big part of being a Christian is being tested and, and loving Jesus because he first loved us. If you want to obtain wisdom, you need to ask God of it, yes, but also you need to get closer to Jesus. You need wisdom. You need to know, you need to know what to do in a certain, uh, certain time and situation. That's the time to get into your Bible more. That's the time to pray more. That's the time to go to church more. So many people, we go through a storm in life and we go the other way. And we say, I don't have time for church. I don't have time for Bible. I don't have time for church. I've got too much going on. But if you need God's wisdom, you have to get closer to Jesus because that's the only way you're going to get it. If you want to obtain wisdom, you know who you have to go to. The closer you are to him, the wiser you will become. So we come back to the question that I asked at the beginning. How bad do we want wisdom? There's a famous story. The great philosopher Socrates was a very muscular man. He was a very strong man, a very young, very arrogant, very 